So this question is a diagram question. The specific type of diagram we have here is a table. So let's look at the information provided in this table. So we have our first row, which represents values of n, our second row, which represents values of f of n. So I think it's worthwhile to note that anytime we have a function, that it's good to understand the relationship between the function value and like the input value, right? So this is the input and this is the output. So I'm going to take column three here and I'll explain why I chose this one out of the other ones in a second. So just based upon the three provided here and the four here, I just want to make sure that you understand that what that's saying is that when n equals three, f of three equals four. Okay. So why did I choose that one? Well, this question I can tell already, and I'll, I'll, let me just take a step back and read the question so we're all on the same page. So the question says, the table above shows some values of the linear function f, which of the following defines f, right? So which of these answer choices defines, right, the information in this function um, provided in the table? So this is going to become a plug in information from the question, PIQ type of strategy where I'm literally just plugging in information from the table into each answer choice function in order to find the correct answer. So why did I choose column three? Well, in these types of questions in particular, it is never a good idea to plug in information where the input number is one. In those cases, it's very common. In fact, I may go on to say I've never not seen a situation where the input value is one and there isn't a trap answer. Trap answer meaning you plug in one for n in this case and you will get negative two for your f of one, but it's not the right answer, right? So it's very confusing. And what I just tell students at this point is if we're using my other strategy I discussed called plug in your own number, you never use one, zero, or negative one for the same reason. And if you're plugging in a number provided to you, if you have more than one option, right, never choose one, negative one, or zero as well. So I'm going to choose three and four um, or three for my numbers that I'm plugging in. So let's try answer choice A. So answer choice A would say F of N. So instead of F of N, I'm going to say F of three, again, because I'm dealing with dealing with this column here, f of 3 is equal to 3 minus 3, again, because n is 3. And because I know that f of 3 should equal 4, I can say, well, 4 does not equal 3 minus 3, which is 0, and therefore answer ch choice A is gone. Answer choice B, I'll try the exact same thing. So f of 3 equals 2 times 3 minus 4. Again, I know that f of 3 is 4. 4 equals 6 minus 4, which is not true, right? 4 does not equal 2. So now I try answer choice C. So B is gone. Choice C would say that f of 3 equals 3 times 3 minus 5. We know that f of 3 is 4. So 4 equals 9 minus 5. And this is true, right? Because 4 does, in fact, equal 4. And therefore, choice C is the correct answer. Um, I'm not going to try choice D. Now, if I had if I had plugged in this positive one here, we should try everything. If you try this on your own, you'll find that answer choice A actually does work when you plug in the information from column one. But then it'll also work for answer choice C, right? So the mistake that a lot of students will make here is that they'll they'll do the right strategy they'll plug in the information from column one, they will see that answer choice A actually worked, and then they'll select answer choice A and move on and just figure that that must have been the right answer. So to avoid all that, just please keep in mind, make a mental note, whenever you're plugging in a number, whether it's the number that you're making up for yourself or a number from the question, stay away from one, stay away from zero, and stay away from negative one.